Good morning, Chapleton. God bless you. Such a joy to be with you this morning. I was had a thought in my heart, and I wanted to share this seed with you this morning. <clears throat> we had just come through a time of celebration of, of Resurrection Day, and so I wanted to uh, talk about something real quickly. <clears throat> in the book of uh, 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love. That word behold is look. It 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 requires a person's complete focus and attention to uh to the matter, to whatever it is that's being expressed or talked about. And so the writer said, Behold, that that stop, look. Uh what manner of love is this? I like to say, what kind of love is this? <clears throat> that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. And 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 uh, another scripture here is Jesus tells us in Luke 15 and verse 20, and nobody knew the Father like Jesus. Jesus. Matter of fact, Jesus said no one has seen him or know him. You see, but the son that reveals them to us. <clears throat> and so Jesus said, Luke 15, you know, the story of the prodigal. He said, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, <clears throat> true enough, this is this this uh, uh, this reaction of the father. Uh, is within the context of the son's um, uh, uh, repentance. But I want you to see something here, that Jesus says that the father was all the while looking out for this boy. He doesn't respond the way humans respond, because so many of us do not realize that we were not designed to respond according to the flesh. See, that's, that's the imposter's response. Uh, God created us and made us vessels that can accept his love and that can reciprocate his love back to him. Then God gave us a, a counterpart or gave us someone likened unto ourselves whereby we can also give love to and receive love. Now, many times when we talk about the love of God, or we talk about love, I should say, many times in the in our in our minds, because of the way, uh, you know, we have not only been raised, but just humanity in general. When you think about love, you're thinking about an emotion. You're thinking about a feeling, and I would be the first to say, uh, yes, our feelings are definitely impacted by it. Uh, but love or the love of God is not based on the feeling because 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says God is love. But but I like to look at what the love of God brings to us. When, 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 when the love of God comes to us, it does quite a bit for us. For instance, it, it alleviates our self-esteem. It, it lifts our self-esteem, our value. It lifts our value, you see, uh, uh, the, 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 the way we see ourselves. It, it lifts all of that. The love of God lifts the person out of this uh, arena and rut of, of what sin has caused in their lives. And it, and it brings them face to face with a God that loves them. And the intention of God for them and for their lives. L look at what. Um, let me let me read this scripture to the look. Look at uh, look at Ephesians with me. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. That's that would be that would be Ephesians chapter three, Ephesians chapter three, and uh, let's look at. Uh, I think it's verse thirteen. Um, Look at this. It says, 
Verse 14 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, notice this, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in your inner man. Look at this now. Look at this. Now, if God is going to strengthen us in, in, his, in our spirits and is going to be strengthened with might, then, then, then the truth of God must be the foundation of what he strengthens us on or what he strengthens us in. Okay? Because if I'm going to be strengthened with might by his spirit in our inner man, it is not just a sense of power that goes through me and that's it. No, it is the truth that comes with this power that solidifies who I am and who's, and God's original design for me, God's intention for me. It solidifies in me who he is to me and what he is. You see, he brings the truth to me. And that truth solidified within my spirit by the Holy Spirit also brings about the strength and the power of God. Look at what he says here. He says, he said, this strength, this, this strength and might by his spirit in our inner man, look what it causes. It It causes that Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. You see that? Now the question is, isn't Christ already dwelling in my heart? When I got born again, yes, of course, you see. But but I believe this. What he's saying here is that that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Notice this by faith. That means it becomes a revelatory. It becomes a revelation. It becomes a conscious truth that you are so firm in that it produces. An inner strength, that's the truth I'm talking about. It produces an inner strength in your own spirit. He said, he said that you being rooted, look at this. This is what it does. That you being rooted and grounded in what? In love. That you being rooted and grounded in love. And look at what happens when that happens. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints. What is the breadth and length and depth and height? And to know the love of God, the love of Christ, which supersedes mere human knowledge. You see that? You see that? And then it says here that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Well, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Because when we're talking about the love of God, we're not talking about an emotion. We're not talking about a thrill. We're talking the, about the very person of God himself. For God don't only just love, that's what he is. You see, that's exactly what he is. And so when we're talking about love, we're talking about God. We're talking about truth, the truth of God. You see, while the feelings will follow Afterwards, uh, it is not founded or based upon an emotion. It is based upon truth. All right, and let me, let me let me just finish this morning by just giving you this here. The the uh, let's see here. Glory to God. First John three and verse one. Now, um, the, the mirror Bible, it says, consider the amazing love the Father lavished upon us. This is our defining moment. We began in the agape. You see that? That's where we started. You see, you see, you know, when, when mo many of us hear about walking in love and we trying. We're trying to walk in love. The Bible never tells us to try. You see, there, there is, there's some things that we first must understand and realize, right? He says, consider the amazing love the Father lavished upon us. This is our defining moment. We began in the agape. 
the engineer of the universe is our father. That's exactly how we started. We were made creatures to function like God. And so the love of God and walking in, in love is our truest identity. It is, it, is, it is what we were designed to be, how we were designed to function. And of course, sin caused what? An imposter called the flesh to take over our lives, right? So it is no wonder, he says, that the performance-based system of this world just cannot see this because they do not recognize their origin in God. They feel, look at this, they feel indifferent towards anyone who does. The writer says, behold, what manner? <clears throat> I imagine Gabriel and, and uh, 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 all the angels in heaven. I imagine all of heaven stood aghast they, they leaned over, as it were, the balconies of heaven while they beheld the Lamb of God allowing his creation to, to beat him to the point of him not being recognized, to pull it's, it's the hair out of his face. I imagine they stood at attention and were ready to hear him say, come and get me, and they would have annihilated in a split second, every human that was hurting him. They stood at attention, waiting on that beckoning call, and yet they were left, they were left, as it were, totally aghast. They, they, they were mesmerized, befuddled, as they saw such love displayed for a creature that cursed God. And and, you know, it, 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 not understanding the plan, not understanding all that God had in his heart and what God wanted to do. But they themselves were, was left awed as they saw the love of God being displayed. He didn't do this for angels. He didn't do this for Lucifer or any angelic being. But God came after you. And he came after me. Now, let me say this, beloved. The scripture said in Romans 8, if God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not then with him freely give us all things? You see this? If God did not withhold what heaven, the, the jewel of heaven, if God did not withhold him from us, then what would he withhold from you now? What would he keep from you? If God didn't withhold him while we were yet sinners, Romans 5 said, Christ died for us. While we were away from God, Christ died. So if God did not withhold Jesus from us when we were sinners, not thinking about him, you're trying to tell me that because we have messed up here, done this here, done the other, then God would withhold himself from us? No, beloved. No. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that you and I should be called the sons of God. God bless. Love you much, beloved. Remember, the power of the seed is not in its size, is in its contents. God bless. Bye-bye.